Hey, welcome back to John Baum Politics. This is episode number 36, and I apologize for the absence, but juggling everything and throwing the proverbial pandemic wrench in the mix got me a little off kilter scheduling-wise. And as an olive branch to my listeners, I am now offering my platform to you. So to begin that mission, I recruited a patriot I follow on Twitter who goes by Waveblog. You can find him at Waveblog1 on Twitter. You know, now we're starting to see all of the uh, the criminality that was behind trying to take Trump down. Trump today was talking about putting people in jail for treason. Uh, he's all, They're already talking about it within his administration. So we get into these four years. Trump has nothing to lose. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, uh, generally speaking, I agree with you. He has nothing to lose on, uh, from the from from the point of view that I think you're uh, approaching it from. Um, you said a mouthful, <laughs> but uh, I really, first of all, Joe Biden is not competent to run for an office. I don't know how they're going to pull off a a, uh, a a debate between a live debate between him and, and Donald Trump. I mean, they they pulled it off with Hillary, but. This is a different situation. Unless he's faking it and they're going to give him some drugs to make him all of a sudden oh, they start will. to have... Uh, yeah, they uh, will. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you. Uh, they did it with Hillary, or at least I believe they did anyway. But um, the, the thing is, is I do not think that... Um, I, I don't think that he's going to he, he's going to fare well in a debate. In, in fact, he was he's it seems as if they're trying to like uh, do a jujitsu move to get out from underneath and try to make it look like Donald Trump is the one who's going to want to prolong it, uh, prolong the election. When actually, if anybody does, I think it's them. So what they're going to pull off, um, I, I really don't think that I think they know that he's he's not going to make it unless they can unless they can uh, manufacture a lot of votes somewhere so i think they i think they got something else up their sleeve maybe uh, uh it wouldn't surprise me if hillary uh winds up uh running because uh they claim he uh, biden has a health problem or something like that so uh, um that being said um i i i think uh i think trump's going to win a because I think he's, if he keeps going the way he is, I think the political climate is actually, in spite of what the news is, the mainstream media is saying, I think actually he's on a good track. I, I think uh, he's going to look good at this. Uh, our, our economy was already uh, uh, being propped up, uh, and they were going to try to blame it on him if they could crash it. Well, you know what? If he if they do crash it now, he's going to have an excuse. A, coronavirus uh it's gonna it, it, you know it's not gonna be the same as if they just crashed it and there was no virus or no other crisis around you know so yeah. uh, does that make any sense to you absolutely so what do you think uh once the inevitable happens what do you what do you think the democrats are really worried about once he gets back in oh i think <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're worried now, and they're not going to stop worrying. But um, I think that the whole world is is is, is so entrenched with these um, mafiosi racketeers that are lazy and, and and see stealing from people easier than actually going out and and earning it yourself. And they call those people politicians because they're the and ones bankers. That, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but actually bankers do some work. <laughs> uh, I don't know if a politician actually does any work. They yeah, do a lot true. of uh, a lot of uh, probably drugs and alcohol and, and prostitutes and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know if they really do any work. Uh, what does it take to say um, to get out every four years and say, I'll do this for you? And, you know, you, you don't want them to put signs up in their town and they say, John, you vote for me, and we won't put any signs up in this town. You can have my word. I will fight tooth and nail for you. And he goes to the next door, and the guy's like, I want more sound signs in this town. And he says, oh, hey, Dave, you vote for me, and I'll put up all the signs you want in this town. You know? It's, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not, that, it's not something that I, that, that's a figment of my imagination. This is what they do. So, yeah. um, I mean, I've seen it, so... Uh, I think uh, I think they're scared, but I but we're fighting an evil that's people have been 
people have let it go on. We're the last country in the world. Everybody looks to us that has a, a chance to to um, come out as the the, the, the catalyst the, the, to 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 start the to to the spearhead. I should say. The only thing is, is we're decadent. We're um, we've we we've, we've been prosperous. Our our forefathers and my father, my grandfather. Uh, was lived a, a a much more horrible life than my father. My father lived a hor- more horrible life than me. I mean, they didn't even use my parents wouldn't even use Novocaine when they got their teeth drilled because they get they grew up without it and they did, right. it didn't bother them. You know, they, when they had their bones set, they didn't have anything. They had some some neighbor come down who was like a, a, a witch doctor. They would call him a quack or a witch doctor today, but they knew how to set bones and they knew how to adjust backs you know you talk about uh um, you know talk, you talk about uh you know, people that know uh, chiropractors today they go to school for it these people learned it on their own they grew up that way there's somebody in their family knew it passed it on and and that's a generation so, uh, that knew what being an american is uh here, there's a recent story here from i don't know if you saw this about the chicago police who shot a uh, short order cook who was just going from one train platform to the other he was, uh, and he he wasn't going with the uh, the orders to distance yourself, and uh, so they shot him. Uh, yeah, but, but so that, that's that's I mean that's that's as totalitarian as you can get. Here's a guy, he's just not obeying some strange order that none of us are used to, and the totalitarian police they've all been put on leave. Of course, they should all be fired, at least, uh, or and sued. But they, you know, you're a short order cook. You're trying to go to work. You go. You're told, "Hey, don't go to that platform." You go to it anyway because you're probably trying to get to your job, and you're shot. Right. And that, that's something that would happen in you know communist China, but it's happening here now. And that's something that your uh, your father and your grandfather would have you know that generation they would have never let that happen. No, it, 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 um, there was a there was a, a common unity. Uh, as far as morals and values go back then it was it was more uh, more pronounced because um I mean, you know there was you know there was exceptions to the rule obviously well yeah, I, I don't want I don't want to give world... I don't want to give the impression that there wasn't uh there weren't you know people that were targeted well just to be a regular person going about your business and you know you, you don't agree with you know whether or not you agree with uh, this being constitutional or un- unconstitutional. It's still all up in the air. It's still very vague whether or not uh, you know listening to the police when they're telling you to go somewhere. Um, you know you should be ticketed at the very least. Uh, you should be left alone, really. But to be shot, uh, it, it, we're we're, oh, agree. we're, we're reaching that's, a that's, point. We're reaching a really yeah. uh, a, a, you know. And we've we've reached this Pickle, yeah yeah we've reached this place in America where uh, we're, we're crossing the Rubicon. Well, you know, my father says something. He said, if, "If police don't arrest you, you don't need them." I mean, you know, we're supposed right. to be equal. That's why we had a militia, you know, the, the opportunity to be a militia or be part of a militia. That means that if you got somebody that's riding on your kid who has a badge and a gun, who doesn't work for you, by the way, you don't pay his paycheck. You don't you don't sign it. OK, he, he works for whoever signs his paycheck and whoever can relieve him of his duty and send him back into another job, fire him or whatever. That's who they work for. Now, if, if don't get me wrong. If we got rid of police right now, it would be mayhem. OK, <laughs> I mean, we have no militia that's trained. No, I, the I hear you. What, what you're saying is they, <laughs> not, they not put their police. pants on just like everybody else. Right. Well, you know, if if. If you know the way it, the way it should work, or the way it, I believe it was designed to work is, you know, if if you got somebody that runs running around uh, supposed to be on block watch and they're harassing your kids, you know, on your street, you know, well, the next week it's John in your street is going to be on block watch, and you know his kid better not be messing around. So that kind of equals it out. But when you've got a group of eight hundred thousand police in a in a nation and they have. Uh, 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 immunity that you don't have, you know, okay, they can go hundred miles an hour down the road. And as soon as they get pulled over, they flash your badge and it's the blue, you know, the blue brotherhood comes to their rescue, you know, but you don't get that. 
because you said something that one of them didn't like. You know, I mean, that's not the, that's not how I see our Constitution is no. supposed to be. Furthermore, in our Constitution, um, uh, uh, um, Article One, uh, Section Eight, I believe, Clause Fifteen is the only place I believe in there where anybody is allowed to execute the laws of the union. That would be the militia. It says the militia uh, uh, shall be for execute. I forget exactly. I don't have the Constitution in front of me. Verbatim, I don't have it. But uh, it says that they, they, the militia shall be for executing the laws of the union, repelling insurrections, and protecting the, from, from invasion. There's no... Nobody else in there that's that's authorized by the Constitution to execute the laws of the Union. So where did police come from, and where did National Guard come from? I mean, I know it's a rhetorical question, but right. so we're 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 we've gone beyond what the Constitution meant. They're they're uh, you know they they're 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 deciding whether it's an organic or an inorganic uh, Constitution or a living breathing one or you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, right now they're arguing over it. You well, know, they're, they're on the verge of saying that a militia is a uh, a domestic terrorist organization. When the Second Amendment says a well regulated oh, militia, <laughs> yeah, being necessary necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's our Second Amendment, and they're saying that our Second Amendment represents domestic terrorism. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Right wing Nazi and all that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? Those labels are something that they think long, and they they do nothing all day, but but uh, uh, but sit there and lick their lips to, to, to try to come up with words and things. And they've got professionals that do this, that know the English language very well. What has to be done now? Now, okay, Mister uh, Mister Know It All uh, Wave Blog here. Okay, <laughs> what has to be done, in my opinion? Okay, is we have to have a, a fit all label. In other words, we can't all argue, you know, this group over here arguing the First Amendment, that one over there arguing women's rights, that one over there arguing race, that one. What we need, what we need is basically we need to put a label on uh, on the, the people that are against our freedom. They're called authoritarians. But the one label that fits is communist. Okay? Marxist socialism... Marx was, you could call him a socialist or whatever, but it's not socialism. Socialism is basically communist light. It's a polite way of saying communism. And it, it, it just, it just, the skin on the back of my, the hair on the back of my neck just stands up when somebody says socialism. Like it's supposed to be a little bit better. Well, let me tell you, you're either an authoritarian or you're not. There's no such thing as, it's like, uh, it's either you're pregnant or you're not. You're not like half, uh, you're not like partially pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You're either an authoritarian or you're not. Anybody that spouts authoritarian views is anti-constitutionalist to me. And I tell you what, I, at any rally I would go to, any place I would go to, the first thing I would do is attack. If, if I was to see Bill Clinton right to his face or Nancy Pelosi, any one of them, I'd say you're an authoritarian communist. And they won't be able to argue it. Now, personally, I'm a Christian, so okay. But, you know, Christianity, the argument, uh, uh, Christianity versus Satan or Lucifer, Lucifer, okay, that's already etched in stone. You're not going to get um, people from all um, uh, from, from, from all different walks of life going to be in on that. But there's one thing that we can all agree on, okay? If they can call us fascists, which is wrong also because fascists is, 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 is socialism too, <laughs> Okay, so it's all a form of communism, and then there's these dopes that are that are anarchists. Okay, anarchism is something you notice they always wear the same colors as, as communists. It's because they're the same thing. They're the useless dupes of the communists, because all they're doing is weakening society so that you can't, so that another another group that comes in that's more powerful than you can 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 um, force their will upon you. So you, you split up and think you're going to be, live some autonomous lifestyle somewhere out in the woods, and all of a sudden, a group of people who have, have a little, a, a little uh, group of huts over there, five people, come over and they take, and, take all your stuff and rape your wife and kill you, and, and take your wife for a slave. So, I mean, that's what, uh, that's what anarchy is. I don't think there's ever been such a thing as anarchy on the face of the earth, really. Uh, uh, it's been 
basically just somebody that's alone and, and desperate. Uh, I mean, so, I mean, I think we're in a very bad position. So, I mean, that's my take on it. I think what we really need is an anti-communist movement. And, and I think that would really, because you go after authoritarians and that covers every one of them. And there's no way to, and the one thing they don't want to be called, they'd rather be called a socialist or a Satanist. And, and if you take down communism, you take down the, you take down the, uh, you know, the, 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 the strength of, of, of Satan himself. So, uh, that's one thing I wanted to say. Absolutely. Hey, wave blog. Thanks for joining me on John bound politics. And sure. we'll, we'll, My pleasure. we'll see you again real soon. What's next for the coronavirus maelstrom? Meat shortages. Bloomberg is reporting hundreds of National Guard personnel are being activated in Iowa as coronavirus sweeps through meat processing plants in a state that accounts for about a third of U.S. pork supply. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds said 250 National Guard members have been moved to full-time federal duty status and could help with testing and contact tracing for workers at plants operated by Tyson Foods Incorporated and National Beef Packing Company. As the meat packing plants affected are stacking up nationwide. Coronavirus cases in Iowa's Black Hawk County have doubled in recent days to 356. And public health officials say 90% trace back to employees at this Tyson meat packing plant. Their outbreak is not an isolated case. CBS News has confirmed COVID cases in at least 17 meat processing plants in 10 states, 13 of which have temporarily closed or are operating at reduced capacity. Back in 2013, when President Obama was re-engineering U.S.-China relations to reflect the emerging Chinese century, Obama made statements like the one published by the left-leaning think tank Brookings Institution, stating, Obama understands that leadership comes with a price, and thus the United States cannot have leadership without strength. At the same time, he recognizes that the United States quote, must be aware of the rise of emerging economies and its impact on the new world order, end quote. Part of this era of Chinese handouts included the buyout of Smithfield Packing Company, the largest pig and pork producer in the world. Yes, folks, it's 300 years of tradition and taste you savor when you ask for a Smithfield barbecue, James River brand, at our refreshment center. And your taste and lose your bought out by what was then known as Shanghai Group for $4.72 billion in 2013. It was the largest Chinese acquisition of an American company to date. The acquisition of Smithfield's 146,000 acres of land made Shanghai Group, headquartered in China's Hainan province, one of the largest overseas owners of American farmland in the world. In addition to owning over 500 farms in the U.S., Smithfield contracts with another 2,000 thousand independent farms around the country to grow Smithfield's famous holiday hams. Is the food supply going to be protected? Are on the at the end of the day is China going to pick the Chinese versus America because they'll now control what percentage of the US pork production. There'll be a very large percentage. I think to your constituents back home, it's the same old Smithfield Nothing's going to change. This is going to be an American company. We're going to continue to operate like an American company, and we're going to protect, continue to protect these brands. Shangwe is buying Smithfield for its brand name and to assuage the horrible reputation that China has so far as food production goes and exports of food. It's gene technology. Our competitors will now be dealing with a Shangwe Smithfield that's as inscrutable as any other Chinese company. Uh, any any other um, any sorts of inf information will not be made public. For example, it'll go through that morass of Chinese uh, dissemination. China's looking at this as an opportunity to feed their people. One of the concerns or questions I have is whether or not your brand, which will be put on Chinese pork, which has been less than stellar, uh, and uh, is, is going to be a problem for your brand uh, down the road. I have spoken to people in China, and this acquisition is being very carefully monitored. 
There are other companies that are waiting in the wings to buy more companies. However, as Reuters reported, Arnold Silver, Smithfield's director of raw materials procurement, said at a recent industry conference that sales to China could eventually create bacon and ham shortages for American consumers. The outbreak of African swine fever has killed up to half of China's hog herd since August of 2018 and pushed prices so high that Chinese importers are willing to pay hefty tariffs. U.S. pork producers say China's losses from the disease have created a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for sales. Officials in Shanghai are weighing in on the effects of thousands of dead pigs that have been discovered over the course of last week, and they've admitted that the quality of the drinking water was in fact affected. Shanghai authorities are going back on statements last week that the water in this river is safe to drink. More than 9,000 pigs have now been found floating down the Huangpu River. Initial water samples revealed trace amounts of a common pig virus, the novel coronavirus. Shanghui could insert local hogs and re-export processed food back to the U.S. under the Smithfield brand. The shipping off of American pork to China during a pandemic caused by the Chinese shouldn't sit well with any American. But now the World Food Program analysis shows also, due to the coronavirus, that an additional 130 million people could be pushed to the brink of starvation by the end of 2020. That's a total of 265 million people. Meanwhile, China just reported another case of African swine fever, just one in a dozen cases in the last two months, devastating the Chinese herd and increasing demand from U.S. pig farms. And now the Chinese coronavirus threatens American food producers. China's coronavirus is nothing short of an act of war disguised in no-fault propaganda, putting millions out of work, decimating small businesses, bringing our education system to a standstill, and undermining our food supply, while China openly celebrates the death of American democracy. John Bound reporting. Well, look, the next president of the United States can have to do, th- do two things. Defeat Donald Trump, that's number one. And number two, it's going to have to make be, be able to anyway. <laughs> Nevada Democrat Lucy Flores claims the former vice president inappropriately touched and kissed her head before a rally in 2014. You know, social norms have begun to change. They've shifted. And the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. We're going to have you're going to have travel bans. You're going to not be able to do have have economic intercourse around the world. There's a lot. Look, just when you thought the Biden campaign couldn't get any more embarrassing, send in the clowns. Today, I am proud to endorse Joe Biden for president of the United States. Howard Stern says that he is all in for Joe Biden. Mm. I seem to recall all of this tremendous outrage when Joe Rogan didn't even endorse Bernie Sanders. He just said, yeah, I'll, probably I'll probably vote for Bernie. Come together in this campaign to support your candidacy, oh. which I endorse, to make certain that we defeat somebody who I believe, and I'm speaking just for myself now, uh, is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. Hillary Clinton has endorsed Joe Biden. Now, if that doesn't make the average American skin crawl, then nothing will. There you see in the middle of your screen Donald Trump, but from left to right, Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick, then Donald Trump in the middle, Kathy Shelton, Paula Jones. Uh, These are women who have made very strong accusations against Bill Clinton, except for Kathy Shelton. Uh, She uh, has accused, uh, she uh, she was... uh, a rape victim, and Hillary Clinton, as a public defender, represented the man accused of raping her. Donald Trump is speaking of these women. I don't know if our audio is good enough, but... If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it. But Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women. 
Leave it to Hillary to be right there when a Democratic candidate is being accused of sexual assault. Perhaps the scent of sexual assault allegations drew the beast out of her lair. So I want to add my voice to the many who have endorsed you uh, to be our president. Of course, Biden could barely stay awake. Hillary is likely making her move to replace Biden, as The Hill reported. A new Emerson College poll showed 57% of likely voters think President Trump will win re-election in November. The poll also shows Trump supporters 19 points more enthusiastic about their candidate than Biden supporters. And although Bernie Sanders has endorsed Biden, 51% of Bernie's supporters are, according to Emerson, open to voting for a third-party candidate. Another red flag is Biden's tepid fundraising. According to the New York Times, Trump has a monster cash advantage of $187 million. We have never heard the end of Trump's pre-candidacy locker room banter offhand comment. I said it, I was wrong, and I apologize. Make me a second. We're out here today because it's been one year since the Access Hollywood tape became public. Um, we saw on this tape a man bragging about sexually assaulting women. That man is now the president of the United States. But if the allegations about Biden are true, Biden literally did what Trump was joking about. Biden's campaign said earlier this month, women have a right to tell their story and reporters have an obligation to rigorously vet those claims. We encourage them to do so because these accusations are false. Quote, the denials come after Tara Reid, who worked in Biden's Senate office from 1992 to 1993, accused the likely 2020 Democratic presidential nominee of running his hand underneath her skirt and penetrating her with his fingers that year, reports the Washington Examiner. Now the media swarm concerning Tara Reid's allegations are intensifying. Business Insider appear to corroborate parts of an accusation of sexual assault against Biden. This was made by a former Senate staffer, Tara Reid. They spoke to Reid's former neighbor who says that she told her about the allegations in the mid-90s. How's the Biden camp responding to these allegations? That's right. Well, the Biden campaign has denied these allegations outright. They've done an investigation in several outlets. Um, those investigations, Vice President Biden has called for himself. Um, Vice President Biden has vehemently denied these allegations. And I support Vice President Biden. Even Orange Man bad sideshow Alyssa Milano backpedaled her previous denial of Biden's alleged attack. Four more years of President Trump is the grand finale. When the Durham investigation and the Attorney General are given the floor to open up a can of lies. We have newly unsealed documents that prove that corrupt agents from Jim Comey's FBI were discussing strategies on how to set General Flynn up on what we call a perjury trap. The shock and awe is over. All of the manipulation the Democrats are guilty of over the first term of Donald Trump's presidency will now backfire. They have all failed, and COVID-19 and creepy Joe Biden are all they have left. John Bound reporting. Thanks again for listening to John Bound Politics. You can find us at Newsbound and John Bound Politics on Twitter at John Bound Reports and John Bound Politics on YouTube, Band.Video, and our home base at Daily News Collective, The Poor Man's Drudge Report, thanks to HC Universal Network. Good night, America, wherever you are.